so you know he had kind of an interesting mix of of players where it's an interesting dynamic where they all have experience this year but they're all still pretty young you really don't have that many seniors on the, on the three deep how do you approach a situation like that where they, they have that experience but you know that they have you know room to grow well i think you know, i mean you, you approach for us spring ball is the same as you always approach it i mean the good thing is Unfortunately, we had a lot of injuries uh, this past fall, but what that allowed us to do was, was play a lot of guys that uh, at the time maybe weren't quite ready to play, uh, but were able to, to play meaningful snaps and grow and get better and to learn um, uh, during the season. And so, the, you know, that what was unfortunate during the season is something that's going to pay off for us next year, obviously, because we played a lot of young guys, um, and a ton of them. And so super encouraged so far about what I see um, – not only from um, just our, our guys' development, but what, what, what fits and the strength and conditioning staff have done this all season with those guys. A lot of guys have started to change their bodies. You can see their development in, in that regard. And just uh, the approach. Yes, we don't have um, a lot of seniors on defense. Uh, there's a little bit of a void there, but, um, but uh, you, you wouldn't know it if you were out at practice the first two days about the way that they're going about their business, the way that they're working. Um, really, really super encouraged by what I see the first couple of days. Um, I think we, we look faster and, and more athletic than we probably have any spring that I've been here. Uh, and, and really, really encouraged about this, this group coming back. You kind of touched on my next question. Um, you know, when you first got here, you, you inherit guys that are recruited to, to play in a different defensive system. And so mm -hmm first couple of years sometimes guys might have been put into a position where they might not have been comfortable going into your fourth year just how do you feel about the group physically in terms of what you want to accomplish I feel good I think um, you know these these last two recruiting classes and uh, specifically um, are a little more tailored to what we're trying to do look look uh, the way that we want them to look uh, so you certainly see that uh, we had our NAPS coaches out here the, the last two days and that was the first thing that uh, the coach Jeffrey says that you guys look different, you move different. Uh, and they certainly noticed that the last two years on what we've sent up to the prep school. And so, yeah, there's a little different body type that we're looking for at certain spots. I mean, we're all kind of looking for the same things, Mike, you know, but uh, but we have, we've kind of changed that a little bit. And so we're, we're starting to look a little more athletic, a little bit longer at certain positions, which we need, needed to be able to do. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with, with, with the way the group looks right now. Thanks, Coach. Bill Wagner. You mentioned Clay Cromwell. Why don't we talk about him real quick? He moved him over to defensive tackle. Obviously, he's you know built more like a nose guard, so he kind of fits at nose guard. But I, I'm guessing maybe he played tackle a bit last year when he wanted to go bigger. But, I mean, I don't know if he has the explosion you're looking for uh, at that spot. I mean, Jarius Warren, uh, is, you know, he's tough shoes to fill. But, I mean, you really feel Cromwell fits at that spot? I do. And you know, we're always looking to get our best players on the field. Uh, however, we have to configure that. Um, you look at what, what we do a lot, Bill. I mean, the, the nose and the tackle are somewhat interchangeable. I think the exception to that would be um, the academy game when we're, we're mostly in an odd front. Um, but when we're an even front, it's, it's they're really the same guy. It's not that big of a difference. And uh, speaking to Clay's explosiveness, I mean, he, he's one of the more explosive, explosive guys we've got up front. So, um, he's certainly athletic enough to play the three technique spot, um, and, but he'll be able to play nose as well. You know, I think he's, he's got to be able to play both of those spots, and, and he's smart enough to learn both. But he'll major in, in uh, at tackle. So, like maybe a guy like Houston, though, is your is the you know the change up guy, if you will. You got a big guy like Cromwell, but if you want somebody who's a little faster, quicker, um, Houston, if he can develop, might be able to give you help at that position as well um yeah i mean our it depends on what we're what we're in who we're playing i mean our end and tackle sometimes are interchangeable we put our more athletic uh of those two guys to the field which is what busick is so i, I see him staying at end which is more of our five technique out there to the field um when we get into certain fronts those guys are, are somewhat interchangeable um, but i don't see um busick playing defensive tackle for us he, he's going to be an end for us I think you said Mewson, didn't you, Wags? Yeah. 
Oh, Matt, I'm sorry. I, I thought you, you said, said music. music. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly, music. You know, we moved Max to to three technique. Uh, a little better suited for that position. He's a strong kid. Uh, I need to put on a little bit of weight on him right now, and he's he's not practicing at the moment. Um, um but uh, because of an injury, but certainly uh, like Max and and uh, excited about his future here too. What about moving uh, Will Harbor to the mic? And obviously, Will had some injuries last year, missed uh, pretty much half the season. I think he played in six games. Um, yeah. But obviously, big shoes to fill with Diego. Your Mike linebacker's got to make a lot of tackles. What's That's your right. thoughts on Will holding up there? Yeah, we, all, we recruited him to, to be a Mike, and that's really what he is. And, and the reason he played Will was because Diego was in that spot. Again, going back to just trying to get the best players on the field, however we've got to configure it. But, but he'll go back to the Mike spot that's more what he's suited to play in our system and, and uh he feels comfortable there and uh, like all those guys uh they need to be able to play both spots but he'll major in mike kind of like Cromwell's majoring in tackle but has the ability to play nose as well and last before i pass off to someone else the corners you got to replace mike uh mcmorris and and jamal glenn you've got yeah. guys that have seen some time um bd williams and elias larry but they're inexperienced that's a Big shoes to fill when they're when you're dealing, talking about guys who are currently plebes who will be sophomores next season. Yeah, it is. Fortunately, those guys got a lot of meaningful reps this past season. Uh, really pleased with their development this off season and the way they look. And you know, we just we were just talking about MB this morning. Uh, really has changed his body. He's trimmed up. He's leaner. Uh, he's a little bit lighter. He's moving really really well. Uh, Elias Larry's put on some weight. I'm excited about those two guys. I think they're both going to be really good football players for us. Um, Willie Collins has had a really good off season. He's had really two really good practices so far this spring. Um, moved to Johnny Gillis to corner, uh, which I'm excited about. And he's a bigger, longer body out there for us. You know, 6'1", 6'2", uh, and can run. Uh, he's playing a boundary corner uh, for us. Um, so I'm excited about that group. Um, the other guy we, we've got out there, uh, Matthew Peters, who's a converted quarterback. He's a 6'3 kid that can 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 run. Uh, so we've got to develop those guys, obviously, uh, but excited about that group uh, and what we've got coming back there. I think we're going to be as as long and athletic uh, as we've been. I think, you know, Mikey uh, is obviously uh, an exception. Uh, he was one of the better athletes I've been around at corner anywhere I've coached, but uh, excited about that group. And we, we've got a ways to go, but I'm really encouraged uh, by what I see there so far. Uh, and what we've got coming in at that position as well. Scott Wyckoff. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Great, Scott. Great. Now, what's it been? I know it's only been two practices, but what has it been like for you not being a position coach and a coordinator at the same time, having that um, this in these first couple practices? Yeah. How's that starting to settle in? Different. It's the first time I've ever done it this way. So it's uh, sometimes I'm, I'm looking around and, and I feel like I should be doing something when I'm not, you know, but, but it's been really good. Um, you know, I, I've always enjoyed coaching position and running a room and I'm going to miss that piece of it, uh, certainly, but it's going to allow me to do a lot of different things uh, and free me up uh, to be able to do some more big picture stuff, to have my hands in some different places. And so as hard as it was to get out of that room, uh, where you can really dive into those players. Uh, it's good for me to be able to put my hands on a little bit of everything. Um, it's going to allow me some more time to game plan and, and script and, and, and do all those type of things. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to do, uh, but I think it's, it's going to be the best thing for, for our program and for us on the defense side of the football. But I like it. There's certain things I miss about coaching position, obviously. I know it's something that you've tried to do each season with your defense implementing new twists to it. Is, is that another thing that you're doing this spring with the returning players that you have an ability to do maybe a little more of that, some new mm -hmm. looks that you, that you yeah. probably maybe wanted to put in the last couple of years, but you haven't been able to do it, like you said, because you haven't had the personnel that now you have all the guys that you've recruited. Yeah, certainly. It's always a mix of what, what personnel you have coming back and, and what can those players do? And then a combination of that and, you know, what, who have you studied in the off season? You know, we, we do that every year. Uh, I take a lot of pride in watching a lot of different people in the off season and seeing what, uh, looking for outliers, um, uh, you know, what they're doing defensively and, and trying to 
know, we're always stealing ideas and, and trying to find something new and unique, but it's got to be something that obviously suits us and who we are. And it's a compliment to who we are and our base. All right. So what are we 80 percent of the time? What do we major in and, and what can we do differently to complement that? Uh, and do do our players, uh, are they able to do those things? And how can we take advantage of, you know, what our strengths are going to be and, and, and kind of uh, diminish what our weaknesses are going to be or, or help us out in those areas? And so that's always a, uh, something that we're looking at as a defensive staff. And so it makes this profession part of what makes it so great is it's always changing. Uh, it's never stale and static. And so excited about that, excited about some of the new stuff that we're doing. And, and this is the time, you know, during spring ball where you can kind of experiment a little bit and see if some of that stuff sticks. And so I'm excited about that. And the last couple of years, it's really been neat to see players kind of come out of nowhere for us as we haven't been able to see them, but you've really been able to develop some top players for the fall that have really emerged in the spring. Is that something that you look forward to each spring? Absolutely. Yeah, and there's always, you know, three or four and hopefully a few more guys that kind of surprise you or impress you coming out of spring. Uh, we're trying to figure out who we can win with right now. Um, and there's a lot of unknowns right now, especially when you, when you start to talk about depth at certain positions. And uh, we may try some guys at a couple different spots and see how that works out. But um, that's always the exciting thing about spring is see who kind of rises to the top, see who the surprises are, uh, you know, who, you know, buying, buying stock in certain guys right now and encouraged by what I see and others, I'm selling some stock, you know, we, we always talk about in those terms a little bit. So, uh, but I couldn't be more encouraged at this point where we're at right now, just the effort and the attitude of our guys. Um, it's, it's a little different feel right now than it, than it has been since I've been here, just as far as the way they go to work, how much they care about each other. Uh, I think we've got a bunch of unselfish guys that, 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 that just, just want to win, want to play for each other. And so that's, that's fun when you got a group like that, man, they're fun to coach. And so it's been, I mean, they go out and they go to work. You know, we're not having to coach effort, I'll tell you that much. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Bill Bergman. Coach, uh, Coach Coniglio and Coach Crawford. Coach Crawford's new to the team this year. What have you seen from both of them so far? Uh, super impressed. I mean, uh, both really, really bright coaches. Um, both add a lot to the room with their ideas and, and their, their takes on everything. And I'm really impressed with, with Coach Crawford so far. Uh, wasn't much of a learning curve for him. Uh, he hit the ground running. Um, I probably wouldn't able to spend as much time with him as I would have liked to going to spring ball, but it hasn't impeded us at all. So I've been really impressed with him and, and the way he's picked up what we do defensively and, and what he's been able to add. And uh, you know, I've been with Coniglio for a long time. We worked together previously. So I knew what I was getting with Joe. I've been super impressed with, with him coaching the striker and the Raider, uh, which are two very different positions on uh, the way he's handled that. And uh, just the improvement I've seen from, from those two position groups so far has, has been great. Two seniors, uh, Nick Straw and John Marshall, not just on the field, but as leaders, what you want to see out of the two of them? Yeah, for them to continue doing what they've always done. And those guys lead by example. Uh, neither one of them are necessarily really vocal guys, but uh, they are leaders for us and more because of the way they go about their business and the work that they put in anything else. And just to continue to do that, but but uh, maybe take more of a vocal role than they have in the past and maybe stepping out of their comfort zone a little bit. You know, you, you always want your – your players to be themselves. Uh, you want your leaders to be themselves, but to also recognize, hey, you know, there's times where I may have to, have to be a guy that steps up and says something that maybe not, maybe somebody else doesn't like. You know, that's part of being a leader, right? Is, um, is doing that when, when it's, it's not a, necessarily a popular opinion or, or you're calling somebody out that didn't really want to hear it. Uh, so just a little bit more um, leadership from a vocal standpoint with those two guys, but been really pleased with what they've done so far. And lastly, just following up on that, who is a vocal leader on the defense right now? You know what? I, I mean, I, when you ask me that question, nobody's nobody pops out right away. Uh, I, I think we've got a bunch of guys that just kind of go about their business and do their work and, and lead by example. And um, that's part of the, what I'm looking forward to this spring is, is to kind of, trying to kind of see, feel who, who those guys are, are going to be. You know, when you think about captains for us, I mean, I've got a couple of ideas and guys I think would, would be great ones, but we're still trying to figure that out, truthfully. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how, how things progress this spring and then even after spring, you know, once we get done. Thank you. Okay, we'll make another trip around. Uh, Mike James. I'm good, thanks. Wags. Ray Lane, I mean, is that a guy that you expect to make a giant jump from freshman to sophomore year? Obviously, he got valuable playing time, but as we discussed last season, he 
There was times he made mistakes or, you know, was, you know, he, he, he learned a lot. Um, do you, but he's a talented kid. What do you see him making a giant jump? And is this a big spring for Ray? Cause it looks like he's playing the free safety position that that's Kevin Brennan. That's a guy that's got to make defensive calls from the back. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, super talented. I said, I said that before. Um, probably wasn't quite ready to play when we had to play him last year. Uh, athletically he was ready, uh, but was super raw. Um, at the position, super raw as far as uh, understanding the big picture stuff and uh, understanding what was going on around him, but certainly has has developed. Got a, a ton of great reps, got better as the season went on, obviously. Uh, has had a great all season. I'm going to got it really never lifted weights in high school. Uh, and so his body is, is changing along with those other guys and uh, certainly a guy that early on looks a little different than he did even in the fall just moving around and just has a lot more confidence about him and what he's doing, uh, has a better understanding of some of the big picture stuff on, 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 as to what we're trying to do on defense. So uh, really, really excited about what he's done in the offseason, the way he's worked and, and how he's progressed at this point. But, yeah, I expect, I expect big things out of him. My expectations are sky high, and I think he feels the same way. But but he's uh, he's got a smile on his face. He's running around. He loves being at practice. He's a fun kid to coach. Um He's a talent now. He's, he's super talented, and I do expect him to make a big leap, uh, and I think he will. So any particular positions where you think there's a really, really tight battle? Uh, you know, I'm looking at maybe Will Linebacker, Colin Ramos, and Tyler Fletcher. Both of those guys played last year and showed some things, and I really shouldn't leave out Terrell Adams either. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, maybe uh, could you mention a couple of positions where it's really, truly – wide open. I mean, Busick's a returning starter. Bernyard's a returning starter. Cromwell played a ton, so he's probably got an advantage there. Straw's a returning starter. Marshall's a returning starter. Um, Ray Lane and Gibbons are returning starters. So it's looking to me like Will Linebacker and Corners are spots that are truly up for grabs. Yeah, I, I, I would say this. There's certainly guys that played a lot of snaps for us, and that carries weight with me, obviously, but spring ball, everything's wide open for us. That's, everybody's going to get the, about the same amount of reps. Um, so, but yeah, you mentioned linebacker, Bill, I think there's, uh, this is as good a depth as we've had at that spot and as good a competition as we've had at that spot since I've been here. I mean, we're, we're three deep at both spots, um, guys that I think we can win with. So I'm excited about that. Um, got to find some, the, the competition really is, um, for the depth, uh, uh, at a lot of places, right? There's a lot of really good players coming back. A lot of young guys that haven't played a lot that are talented, uh, they're going to contribute. So we're just trying to figure that all out. But it's it's wide open uh, right now everywhere. And could you mention a couple guys that were on scout team last year? Because that's what Coach Neumont was saying Monday. One of the fun things about spring when you give everybody reps is guys that are on the scout team last year, they, they, this is their shot to step up and say, hey, look at me. I can mm -hmm. play. Yep. Um, I'm looking at you got a guy named Creedon Folger on the depth at, at end. Um Price and Greer at guard, nose guard, Tyler Gaskin at corner. Um, some guys who, you know, I don't know about Turner Step. He may have been on the depth last year. I can't remember. But so there's some guys that have really not played. This is their chance. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned you mentioned Creed and Folger. I mean, he's a he was hurt last year. Um, got hurt early on in camp, so really wasn't able to catch up after that. Uh, he's guys put on 15 pounds this offseason. season. He's 265 pounds. He's a really good athlete. Uh, very excited about about him, and um, and looking forward to seeing what how he develops and what he can do this spring. Um, you mentioned Turner Step hurt his ankle toward the end of the year last year and was was making a lot of progress. Dislocated his ankle, I think, um, with four or five games left in the season. Uh, but love the the direction that he was going, and I think he's going to be a really good player. Um, trying to think of some of the guys you mentioned. Tyler Gaskins is, is a very talented uh, young corner that you mentioned earlier. Uh, Nolan Barber is a guy that, that got into the depth later on in the year, who was on scout team most of the year, big nose guard, who, who um, we're going to have to have step up at that position. Um, Price and Greer, you guys had a great off season, really impressed the way he's moved around early on. So there's a lot of guys like that, uh, as you mentioned, and that's what the, the fun part of spring ball is, is all about, seeing how those guys develop and see which one of those guys comes out um, as a guy that we feel like can help us win games and maybe surprises us a little bit.
Thanks, Coach. Always appreciate you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Scott Wyckoff. I'm all set. Thanks, Coach. And last, Phil Bergman. Coach, uh, just in case we don't talk to you prior to the draft, a uh, final sales pitch for teams on why they should look at Diego. Because uh, he's a stud. Um, and he's got all the tools. And, and if, if he lacks something in one department, he's going to make up for it in the other department. So uh, he just got to get a shot. Um, and his intangibles are through the roof. His instincts, uh, his brains are through the roof. Somebody's just got to give him a chance. And I think he's a draftable player. I really do. Uh, I know uh, everybody got a different system. He fits in others better, some up better than others, but um, but he can certainly play at that level. I don't, there's no doubt in my mind. I'm kind of curious what it's like, um, not just with a, a new position coach this year, but also with a new group of players, you know, with the strikers and Raiders being in, in the same meeting room, which wonders has the dynamic changed at all or, or what's it like uh, this year? Yeah, it's uh, it's different for sure. Um, having the strikers and John Marshall in the room is making us to be more like outside linebackers instead of like more athletic defensive ends. Um, we've played more like defensive ends for the past couple of years, but now with Coach Coniglio and the strikers in the room, it's more like we're playing like outside linebackers. So we're being forced to be more athletic, um, have to adapt the coverage a little better, um, which I'm excited about. I can't wait. So it's a little different for sure, though. So is what you're being asked to do a little bit different than, than, than it was uh, in years past? I think it's mindset, most of all. From what I've seen so far in spring ball, I mean, we're pretty early still, but just the mindset is thinking like an LB instead of like, you know, just own your gap. It's more like big picture, seeing what the whole scheme is and, you know, where I can fit in and make plays in that aspect. But yeah, mostly mindset at this point. All right, thanks. Uh, Scott Wyckoff. What does it mean for you, Nick, being able to be more of a, a little bit more of a leader now as a senior, having been on a team that's been packed with seniors during your time at Navy? Yeah, no, we've been blessed to have great leaders. I mean, last year with Diego and Kevin and Chance and these guys, I mean, they did a great job leading with adversity. Um, and now it's our turn to lead. So it's it's cool to have finally ascend into that role. And I'm, I'm you know, happy to be there and just trying to do it one day at a time and lead from the front if I can and you know, lead by example. But yeah, I'm definitely trying to do my best to uh, get us all there if we can. I'm, I'm glad that we're in the spot. Yeah. What do you like best about Coach Newberry's defense? Oh, goodness. There's, it's just, there's no one thing about it. It's, there's so many different angles he can attack you from. So like the offensive coordinators have no idea, you know, where the next pressure or what coverage we're actually going to be. And there's always disguises and all these different sorts of angles he's coming at you with and it's so different and so versatile that it makes us you know that much more dangerous on defense and he always seems to talk about having guys who are long and fast and you're long and fast why does that make such a important part of being a player in his defense we can do multiple things in that case you know if you're long and fast you can both cover well and you can play in the run game too so it, it kind of makes you so you're not just a one-dimensional you know only a run stopper only a coverage guy you can have you know, a lanky Raider, for example, can drop back and, you know, pick some balls off or I can go play in the run game too for a striker or a linebacker, the same thing. Thank you. Bill Bergman. Nicholas, um, what do you want to work on this spring, both as a leader and as a player on the field? Yeah, I would say um, my biggest development is probably just like the big picture understanding of things. Um, Coach New and I talked about that last year, just trying to see, like, you know, understand beyond my individual role and get beyond just, you know, do X, do I, do Z, and try and see why he's calling these calls and understand the situations down a distance and why, you know, we're doing what we're doing. And that's my big uh, personal focus, along with, you know, coverage and pass rush to get, you know, more pressure on the quarterback and try and influence the passing game a lot more. Um, yeah, you said leadership, right? Mm -hmm. That was your second question. Yeah. Um, Leadership wise, just there's no, you know, one thing, you know, do X or do Y. It's just, I'm just going to keep being me and do my best. That's, you know, I think people respect that. Um, try to lead from the front if I can. You're one of 11 guys with uh, two or more letters on this team entering your senior season now. Has it hit you yet that you're one of these veterans on the team and it's your job to kind of um, lead this group? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. To my friend, Max Sandlin, uh, it's, it's definitely weird because I feel like I just, you know, 
got through my sophomore year of trying to play inside back and then go to Raider and go back and forth. And, and now it's, it's finally out my senior year coming up and it's definitely crazy and it's definitely hitting, but I mean, it, it's here and you can't really let that phase. You just got to go forward and, and take it one day at a time and help everyone get better and, you know, try and get ready for Delaware. Thank you. Wags. So Nick, um, how badly do you want to be a captain? It's an incredible honor. Um, is that something that you really seek out? I mean, it's definitely, yeah, it's a great honor, like you said. Am I seeking it out? If my teammates vote me a captain, then I'll definitely accept it, and I'll be the best I can be. But I'm not defined by a title. Like, if I'm a captain or not, I'm still a leader on the team. I can still, you know, lead, whether there's four other guys that are captains, whether I'm one of those guys, like, being having that title is not what makes me a leader and I think that I've been able to lead you know this year and past years too without having to be a captain but obviously I would love that'd be amazing to be you know to have that sort of respect given to you from your from your peers and I would love that but I'm not actively I guess you know that has to happen like I I would be honored beyond honored if that were able to happen but I'm not making that my end-all be my end-all be all is to win 11, 12 games a season and go to near six bowl. That's all I care about. And have my teams, get, have my teammates get better. Like, it's not about me per se, but again, like I would love that to happen. With regard to the Raider spot, there was times when Navy used a defense that took that position off the field. Um, for you guys at the Raider, uh, do you think you want to play so darn well that you tell coach Newberry, you got to put us on the field? <laughs> Right. That was that was the goal last year. Um, I feel like starting in Cincinnati and going on, that was the goal was to make us that we were indispensable. Um, Coach Newbert knows best, though. So if you were to put, you know, that three down front back out there, you know, for Delaware, I would I trust it with my, you know, with everything. I would do it. I would accept my role. Hey, I'll play defensive end if I had to also. But yeah, my goal is definitely to make sure that our role is indispensable. That I can both play coverage well enough. They can trust me out there and pass rush that I can't be taken off the field. But again, whatever Coach Newberry calls, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm down. And last for me, obviously, uh, Navy has a lot of returning defenders who have seen playing time. There's You know, look at the depth chart, and there's a couple guys at almost every position who have been on the field, gotten valuable reps in games. Uh, to us, you know, media types and fans, we think that translates into – improve defense next season. Do you think that's the case or is that something that still has to be proven? No, yeah, we had a lot of guys playing last year and it was tough because, you know, they're all freshmen or sophomores getting that first look, but they worked hard and they've come this off season to, you know, get better every single day. And I think we're going to see it this season. I, I am super confident to see where this team goes because we have so much young talent. They're good. And they had that experience last year. So now they're going to come in this year with that almost confidence to go play and do their thing. So. Yeah, look out for this defense this year. I, I tell you what, I mean, we were playing well last year, but this year, just look out for it. Thanks. All right, I'll make one more trip around. Uh, Mike James. I'm good, thanks. Uh, Scott Wyckoff. Nick, I, I mean, talking to the coaches, they're just chomping at the bit, it seems like, every day to get out there in the practice field in the spring. What's it like for the players? Because you don't have the payoff of that game you know, maybe a week away or two weeks away uh, when you're going through the spring practice. What's the, the attitude of the guys in spring practice when they're out there each day? I would say hungry. Everyone comes out, comes out there super hungry, ready to get after it because we've been waiting for months and months to get back after getting on the field and start playing real football again. We've been working hard with Coach Fitz every day of the offseason, but now it's time to actually put some real football. So everyone's hungry. It's, it's, there's energy and everyone's just excited to be there. And it's, it's contagious. I mean, like even like the, the grueling pursuit drills, everyone's ready to chomp at the bit to get out there and, you know, and, and show what they got and compete. So it's even though there's no payoff of a game on Saturday, it's still like it's still super just energetic and, and hungry is the best word I can say. Hungry. Thanks. Bill Bergman. Nick, um, what can you tell us about two of the other Raiders, uh, Max Sandlin and Jordan Sanders? What are they like as players? Yeah, so they're both uh, super long, athletic, and quick, and can cover very well. Uh, very, very talented players. Uh, yeah, I, I am super proud of them. They've come a long way. Max is, you know, my class, and Max was a Raider before I was, so 
he's obviously got his stuff down. And Jordan, you know, being a freshman now, had a lot to learn. But Jordan's going to be – he'll be a player. I'd say he'll be a, he'll be a good player because he has all those, you know, those measurables, like the, the size and the length and the speed. So very talented guys, and they work so, so hard in the weight room. They're, we're all in the same lifting group, so we're always pushing each other every day. But, yeah, they're very talented guys and really great guys to be around. And uh, I know it's only been a few days, but uh, with Coach Newberry now not with a position, do you uh, like seeing him a lot more around, or is it about the same as it was? Yeah, so actually we do see him a lot. He, he will come into the meetings, um, just like, you know, watch, add his input, you know, add little tidbits here and there. So it's actually really nice, and I do appreciate that. So come and say some little, you know, strawberry sure you can consider this thing for this play. And I'll be like, okay, cool. So it's like little notes he can add in there that he couldn't do before because he was, you know, with the safeties. But now he can actually come in there and assist us and add in stuff. So it's cool. Thank you. Wags. Well, so as you had your off-season meetings with whomever it would be, Coach Newberry, Coach Coniglio, they always tell you what you need to do to improve. What, what do you personally want to work on to become a better football player between now and the start of next season? Right. So with Newberry, me and him talked last year. Um, his biggest thing for me was just big picture and like understanding like the, the concepts of what is going on. I had a couple of plays last year where I would, you know, sit down just to not, you know, understand what was going on big picture. And I would make a play that was not the right play. Um, with, with Coniglio, just pass rush and cover, cover guys, be aggressive. That's my biggest thing. 